Well, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. A lot of stuff. And here's the deal. Right now, there's so many people that are focused on so many other things. And you guys see we've been quiet for a minute, right? Because we've been gathering all kinds of information. And by we, I mean my wonderful, wonderful subscribers, my very good friends, and myself. We've been sort of digging around and rummaging around in the crates. And here's my question to you. I want to know what you think could be done with this quote-unquote port or quote unquote barge or runway. Eh, who knows what it's really called. However, there are comments that are being floated around out there that Netanyahu just might propose to use that new port. And I don't mean cigarettes <laughs> to displace some of the Palestinians from Gaza. Hmm. I don't know. You guys, it, it could be a lot of stuff. Now I do remember him going around shopping trying to get everybody to, uh, you know, take some of the Palestinians as if he had, you know, some type of ownership of them, trying to get everybody to take some of these folks off of his hands. And he said, nobody wants them. Well, the head of the Israeli occupation government, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and a lot of people don't even know he's not the president. They got one. I say that all the time. He has proposed to use the new port to be built by the United States on the Gaza coast to displace Palestinians from the enclave. Israelis can broadcaster has reported. Can noted that the proposal was presented by Netanyahu at a special meeting. Okay, and this was of the Kennison Foreign Affairs. This was a defense committee that he was standing there or sitting there talking with. Here's a quote. The port can facilitate the exit of the Palestinians from Gaza. There is no obstacle to the Palestinians leaving the Gaza Strip except for the willingness of other countries to accept them, which means this is right in line with take more in, America. I'm dropping this line so y'all can take more in as well as everybody else because you just heard me say that nobody else want them, but I know y'all take anybody. So take them. Now here's the deal. I don't think it's a problem receiving them. I just want to know who you send in. I don't care what country it's from. Who are you sending? That's the question indeed. Are you emptying your prisons and sending them here? Or are you, what are you doing? Who are they? But we already know how this is going to play out. Netanyahu is quoted again of saying that there's no obstacle to the Palestinians from leaving. Sure it isn't. The U.S. plans to build a temporary floating pier on the coast of Gaza to allow aid to enter more easily. According to President Biden, the pier will allow a massive increase in the amount of humanitarian assistance getting into Gaza every day. Netanyahu's proposal to displace the Palestinians was met with Palestinian anger, as it should be. How are you going to just move us and you acting like you own us? If I go anywhere, I should be able to go where I want to go. Now, here's the skinny. If this is the case, then that should tell everybody who believes that they had any ability to start something a lot. Because you didn't have any ability to start anything if you're being watched and monitored for 24-7. And that's the reason why they're angry. Because they're saying, you don't have a right to send us anywhere. Moreover, you didn't have the right to keep us the way you did. Now, to top it all off, you're going to ship us somewhere? Uh, it's, it, <laughs> this speaks volumes, but the Secretary General of the Palestinian National Initiative, Mustafa Bugarti, said in a post on X that Netanyahu revealed his intentions toward the American port in Gaza in his presentation, saying that the port can be used to transfer Palestinians out of Gaza. He never gave up his dream of complete ethnic cleansing, he says. Mm. I don't think I disagree with him at all. Let me see if this right here will uh, tickle your funny bone in any way. Just over the weekend, or last week, I should say, there was a comment or a big argument between Getz, I think it was yesterday, wasn't it, the day before? 
it, it was between gets and a, a bunch of stuff going there at the Congress. And here's why I say it the way I do, you guys, because I'm so disgusted with hearing everybody go down here to the um, to Congress and have these big conversations. And while they're having all these big conversations, there's nothing that comes of it. So apparently Getz was going off. And as he was going off on Austin, he was asking all these questions. Now, here's the deal. They're planning to send, they say, a thousand people, a thousand troops. And it's we, we, we never said we were going to put any boots on the ground is basically what, what we're being told, right? But if you are sending a thousand troops to uh, any country, do you realize that that is an entire battalion? And in one battalion, there's anywhere between four, maybe six companies altogether. That sounds like enough to start something. He was even asked at that time is, hey, if for whatever reason, there's a problem and somebody starts to, you know, shoot or attack. What, what wouldn't they have to attack back? Wouldn't they have to respond? Well, of course they would have to respond. And I'm paraphrasing here from the uh, from the avatar that is now Austin, because I don't believe homeboys in, around anymore. But anyway, uh, this is what was asked. Won't they have to retaliate? Won't they have to respond? Well, of course they will. All right. So if you got a thousand boots on the ground at that point, even though you're saying they're on the pier, the pier leads to the ground and who going to have a boxing match on a pier? Nobody. So the question is, what are they going to do if they happen to have to protect themselves or to respond in kind? Well, they're going to be throwing bows. That's basically what he is saying, answering and saying. Now the prime minister has the United States of America's backing of this port, quote unquote, port or pier. But I want to tell you, these folks were planning this for the forever because this goes right in line with the entire deal that we talked about a few months ago, where it was showing that Netanyahu said, hey, look, we can just make a corridor to go straight through here, from here all the way through to Asia and the West. Well, and the West is the places that they're clearing out right now. They're making it so expensive to live in the West in two major places as well as others. But let's just focus on two for the sake of argument. There's a large port, nothing but big, big old gigantic port city, right? Port city is New York. Another port city or port place is New York. A port place is California. You've got, um, let's see, what is it? San Pedro, Long Beach, California, big, huge port. Stuff coming in and out. You've got the uh, you, you've got New York. <clears throat> now they're clearing that whole thing out. Rents are so high, people got to leave so they can turn these into commerce. Well, how else could Babylon be seen from far off burning if they were not port cities? Anyway, I digress. So we've got New York. We've got California. Where else is ports? There are ports in Virginia. There are ports. Uh, well, there's ports in several different places. You even got down Florida. All right. So you get these ports to come all the way in and out. And now you've got that corridor. And now you don't need who's been preventing you from making any money because it's all about money. It's all about the money changers. It's all about commerce. It's always going to be. And it always has been about commerce. It's always been about monetary value. Mm hmm. So the mammon of it all is the reason for this. Now, here's another point. Not long ago, there was a conversation about who, first of all, let me start here. I'm not one of these people who believe that anything is going to come from anyone saying they want to have a showdown at the Hague. I don't believe it. I believe that there's a lot of talk. I believe that there's a lot of people throwing stuff out there in the hat so that people get all amped up. And do you know what they said they're going to do? They're going to have him taken into the hay. But I want to point out one important thing. There was a letter that was presented by 12 Republicans. And these Republicans basically said, do not touch Israel. And then during this whole big argument about what are we going to do, if they try to drag him into court, and by him, I mean Mr. Netanyahu, what are we going to do if they try to drag him into the Hague because we don't agree with the way that he is handling the Palestinians? Now, I know some will say, well, just the other day they said that there was going to be a ceasefire, but was it? 
And is it? That's the question, because we've seen a lot of uh, conversation about stuff that they say we're not going to do, and then they turn right around and they do it. So I know that's going to be one of the topics, number one. Number two, do you know that it was the United States as well as maybe a few other places that said, no, we do not want to see him drug in the court. We do not want to have any questions asked of this man, basically, about what's going on with the way the treatment has been rolled out of the Palestinian people. We don't want him to go any place. Leave him alone. Because if you bother him, then you're bothering us. And by us, I mean the United States. <laughs> this in and of itself is problematic. Because what this does is sets up our country to be a whipping post of sorts. Of course, we're always the ones that are running to everybody's aid, but I submit all of these new laws that we are writing that are coming from other countries or other places that are now mo motivating us to do like what the president just did with the um, anti-Semitic uh, law, making it illegal for anyone to say anything uh, about a certain set, sect of people. Hmm. Well, I think that uh, that should tell us volumes. It really should. And here's what I mean. There should be no special treatment for nobody. Let that sink in. There should be no special treatment for nobody. There should be one set of rules for respect as it relates to talking or dealing with people and treating people a certain way. There should not be any special anything. But lately, I see we've been laying down building blocks here in the United States that would lead us to have a special set of something for certain people. So you guys let me know what you think down below in the comments. I'd love to get your take on this because you're going to have a lot of folks that are a little upset about a port that's going to allegedly, according to what he even said out of his own mouth, and by he, I mean Mr. Netanyahu, to send people elsewhere and is said elsewhere here. Not that it's a problem to receive people, but just like we have a whole boatload of folks over here now and we cannot vet them, is that what's going to happen again? Are they sending them here? Not that it's a problem. <laughs> For Headlines of the Voice, this has been the Lockhart News Brief. The Lockhart Perspective.